take some tracks and get out of here. <clears throat> no, come on, don't be ridiculous. You haven't even had breakfast yet. Brooke, you and Tom have to talk. I'd like you to stay, Mark, please. Brooke, he is your husband. You guys have to work this thing out. He doesn't believe me. Well, talk to him, okay? Just talk to him. Okay, thanks. I appreciate everything. You know I do. Okay. Don't leave on my account, Mark. I'll be out of your way in no time. I was just telling Brooke that the two of you should talk. Okay? Okay? So I have to call you later anyway. You didn't waste any time, did you? What? Calling your ex-lover over here to spend the night with you. What do you expect me to do? I certainly didn't want to be here alone. At least he's made some attempt to understand how I feel. Well, and I haven't, right? No. You're too busy defending the man who tried to rape your wife. What am I supposed to say? You walked out on me, Tom. You threw me out. You walked out. You said you didn't want to come back here anymore. That's not true. Kind of, I'm walking on eggshells around here. I don't want to come near you because you're, you're too nervous or you're too upset. And what do you do? The minute I leave, you call up Marky Boy to come spend the night. What are you suggesting? I don't see any pillows on the couch. He slept in the upstairs guest bedroom. I don't give a damn where he slept. It's none of my business. Boy, I don't believe this. I mean, I'm the one who was attacked and almost raped, and you're treating me like I'm a criminal. You're accusing me of... Boy, it makes me really know what you think about me. I think you treat people like dirt, that's what I think. You think I treat people like dirt? What about me? What about the way I've been treated? That's what it always comes down to with you, isn't it? What about me? What about Gil? What about the guy whose life you're ruining because of your obsession? Get out. Get out! You bet I'll get out. Are you aware of how many men out there own red flannel shirts? Yes, I'm aware of that, Detective Levy. Are you aware of the fact that Gil's friend Brian not only owns that red flannel shirt, but he also owns a ski mask identical to the one that the man who attacked me wore? Did you see the mask? No, he described it to me. It's light blue wool, wool, wool knit with, with navy blue trim. Mrs. Cudahy, Mrs. Cudahy, if you were at his friend's apartment, why didn't you see that mask? I didn't. I didn't see the mask because it was missing. Not only that, look, Gil lied. He wasn't with his friend all that night. His friend had a date. His friend was out of the apartment for at least four hours. Oh, I see. So what I'm trying to, to get through to you is that Gil had plenty of time to get here to Pine Valley and get back to New York. So what you're saying is Gil Barrett, your husband's best friend, left New York City after 8.30 came here, broke into your house, and attempted to rape you, all with his arm in a sling, and then returned to New York before midnight. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. What I want to know is why nobody down in headquarters ever d decided to check out his alibi. Barrett came in on his own, Mrs. Cuddy, and after talking to him and some other people, we didn't think further investigation was necessary. You didn't think it was necessary? He told us he'd be around. He offered to give us his friend's phone number. So why did anybody take the number and call his friend? Look, I'm a cop, okay? I go by my instincts. I'm working on 16 different cases. I haven't been to bed before 2 o'clock this whole week. I, why? I don't care. I don't care if you haven't been to bed. You're a policeman. You're supposed to investigate an accused rapist. In the first place, you didn't press charges. In the second place, no rape was committed. In the third place, there isn't one shred of hard evidence to back up your claim. And if that isn't enough, try this. The guy doesn't act guilty. This. I don't believe it. He doesn't act guilty? He's still in town, right? If he was guilty, do you think he'd keep hanging around? He's a around? psychopath! He told me he was coming back here to finish the job. He told me that. That's why he hasn't left town. I know. You said that, Mrs. Cudahy. But there's a lot of kooks out there. You're a prominent person. You're on TV. You work for a newspaper. You must get a lot of weird calls. 
Is that what this is about? I mean, are you not doing anything about this because of articles I've written about police brutality and conditions in the jail? See, I'm going to ignore that remark, Mrs. Cudahy, because I know you're upset about all this. Yes, I'm very upset. I'm very upset because I'm being treated like a criminal, and I am the victim. All right. I'll talk to Barrett again. I'll, I'll check out this Brian Collier, and I'll get back to you as soon as I have any hard evidence. Listen, there's another thing. Did Gil mention anything to you about a vase? What vase? A vase, a vase. I said I hit the guy with a vase when he was in my bedroom. What about it? Gil told me he knew about it because you told him. Uh, it's possible. I'd have to check my notes. You don't remember. You don't remember, do you? I guess the, those other 16 cases are a hell of a lot more important than catching someone who's accused of rape, right? I'll get back to you as soon as I have anything. Yeah, you do that. You do that. I'm looking forward to it. You're terrific, you know that? Goodbye, Mrs. Cuddy. Yeah, Devin, listen, are you going to be home in the next couple of minutes? I'd like to come over and talk to you. Well, you're not open yet. That's why I came by. We have to talk. I'm busy. This is pretty important. You think maybe we can go in the office? You want to talk, talk. It's about Brooke. Really? Yeah, really. Listen, I believe her. I think she's telling the truth. She needs your help. Listen, I don't care to hear about what you think my wife needs, okay? Tom, I was there when she questioned this friend of Gil's, okay? I believe her. Yeah, she's very good at getting people over to her side. I'll give her that. It's not a question of being on somebody's side. It's a question of her safety. Oh, well, there's where you come in. You know how to make her feel safe. Look, you should be happy I was there when you walked out. She threw me out, Mark. Tom. Go home to her. Talk to her, okay? Get this thing straightened out. Yeah. Why don't you give me some advice on how to do that? She's accused a guy who wouldn't hurt a fly. I've known him for 15 years. He's my best friend. He's not a rapist. Now, I know that. Maybe you're too close to this thing, okay? Maybe you're too close to it to see what's going on. Gil is a smart guy who's gone around the bend. I'm telling you, he's dangerous. I'm telling you, you don't know what you're talking about. Devin, listen, I need your help. I, I need some information for my case. Okay, all right. I, I want to ask you about two weeks ago, February 9th. Yeah? It was in the evening that I'm interested in. Do you remember? Here. Uh, uh, February 9th. February, February 9th. Yes, I do remember because Bonnie had her school concert that day. And it was, uh, yeah, that was the first night that Gil stayed with us. Do you remember if he made any phone calls? Phone calls. Uh, well, let me see. Let me think back. I know that we all had dinner together, and uh, Mom went to bed early. Uh, he did the dishes. Uh, I went upstairs to tell Bonnie a story, tuck her in, and I came back downstairs. Yes, I came back downstairs. It was odd. He had his arm out of the sling, and he had done the dishes. And I thought when I was upstairs, I had heard voices, so I asked him, and he did say he used the phone. Yeah. Did he tell you who he called? Uh, yes. He said he called a, a, a friend, a buddy of his Brian? in New York. Brian yes. in New York? Brian in New York, yeah. Do you happen to remember, I know this is going to seem strange, that you, do you happen to remember what time? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is odd. This is really odd because, I mean, I thought it was strange he had his arm out of the sling, so I commented that he had made this miraculous recovery. And I looked at my watch, and my watch said 8.05. I remember. 8.05. You're sure? Yeah. Then that proves it. He did it. Can I use your phone? I, yes, of course. He did what? He called me to say he was going to finish the job. I got a call about 
I know I was pretty sure it was him, but until you told me, I didn't know for sure. Hello? Hello, Brian. This is Brooke Cudahy. Listen, I hate to bother you again, but I want to ask you a question. Do you remember what you were doing uh, about two weeks ago? It would have been the evening of February 9th. February 9th? Yeah, it's... It's very important. If you don't remember, maybe you have a calendar that could help you. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Kara's birthday. Um, well, I went out to dinner, and then a friend of hers uh, threw a party for her. Why? Did Gil call you? Uh, I mean, did he call you at, at any time during the evening at the party or, or anywhere? No. No, why? Um, I'll get back to you later, all right? Uh, thanks very much. It was him. And when you get your phone bill, you're going to find out that there is no call to Brian in New York because I'm the one that got the call. I don't believe this. What, do you want to go to the police? Or are you... <laughs> the police? Why would I want to go to the police if I want anything done? Well, look, I, 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 I don't worry. Sure All right, I appreciate you your help. You need to be help. careful don't about, about this, about Brooke. I don't want you to go... I, I'm talking to myself. Devin remembers the exact time, Gail. It was 8.05, and you told her that you had talked to Brian. So? So it was Brian's girlfriend's birthday, and they went to dinner, and they went to a party, and he never talked to you once. Brooke, I don't see how you can expect anybody to remember a phone call that they got two weeks ago. Because he didn't get the phone call, I did. You poor thing, you're out of your mind. Not only that, you told me you couldn't wait to finish what you've begun. You know, Brooke, I think you ought to try your hand at writing fiction. You're real good at it. And Devin remembers hearing you talk on the phone. She can testify to that. And you want to know who I was calling, huh? Is that what you're after? Oh, I know who you were talking to. I answered the phone. I was talking to a girl, okay? I told Devin it was Brian because I didn't want to hurt her feelings. A girl? Yeah, a girl. A girl I met here in the bar, okay? What was her name? That's none of your business. What was her name? Peggy, okay? Peggy what? I don't know Peggy what. She wrote her, her first name and her phone number down on a cocktail napkin and handed it to me. Isn't that convenient? Where is the napkin now? I threw it out. Naturally. Look, I called the lady. She told me she was getting back together with her boyfriend. What am I going to do? Save a cocktail napkin for my scrapbook? You know, the only thing I can't figure out is whether you make things up, things up on the spot or whether you have this all carefully planned out in your head ahead of time. Sweetheart, you're the one that's making things up, and I'm sick of this. I've had it right up to here. You really get off on making trouble for me, don't you? I'm going to get off when you are in jail where you belong. Nobody's going to put me in jail, Brooke, because I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. You are guilty. And if the police won't prove it, I'm going to. Brooke! Judge Meyer should be removed from the bench. The ruling was an outrage against justice. And Walter, do we have a chance? Yeah, I'll put the entire firm on it right away. But we'll have to have a thorough environmental study, and that can't be done in 48 hours. I just thought of something. What? Yeah. There's a special election the day after tomorrow. Yes, but what good will that do us? Well, Mr. Hines, if we get enough signatures in time, then we could add a proposition to, uh, to the special ballot, right? Right. We could, we could uh, write up a petition calling for a referendum. A referendum for what? A, a law to make gambling illegal in Pine Valley. How many signatures would it take? 5,000. Hmm. So I guess, being that it is the day after tomorrow, we, there wouldn't be time. Oh, what a pity. I'm sure they would support us. You say there wouldn't be time? I'm afraid not, Mrs. Wallingford. Shame on you. Shame on all of you. You're acting like a bunch of pusillanimous milk socks. Oh, really, Phoebe? Well, I mean, you're, you're, you're just a fetus, that's all. We're giving up without even a fight. But it can't be done. Can't, sir, is not in my vocabulary. I, for one, shall start at dawn tomorrow collecting signatures. Anybody else with me? Well, I'll join you. So will Myron Sloan and Daisy. Good. Anyone else? 
Well, I certainly do my best. Oh, bravo, sweetheart. Langley! You can always count on me, love. <laughs> well, I suppose we can try. We can not only try, sir, we shall succeed. Oh, Adam Chandler, on guard, the voice of the people shall be heard! Hear, hear! Hear, hear! Hear, hear! Watch out. Sorry, anything? No, just the same thing. He wanted me, he wanted the baby, and... You know, I tried to tell him I, I wanted to be his friend, I wanted to help him, but it uh, didn't do much good. He went upstairs and he took a bottle with him. Brooke, I'm sorry. Huh? I just think you ought to give up on him. I think he's gone under. No, no, no. You know, maybe not. I, um, I called Father Tierney last night and I asked him if he'd go over and talk to Tom. And I couldn't sleep last night because I wondered what happened. Then Father Tierney, Tierney called me this morning and said he'd persuaded Tom to go to this place that the, uh, the church owns. It's, you know, sort of a rehabilitation place to dry out, so... That's good. It's probably the best place for him. Also give you a chance to get him off your mind. Yeah, I wish I could. I just keep thinking that he's wasting, he's wasting his life. Brooke, this isn't your fault. I know that. It's just that, you know, I mean, he is my husband. And, uh, I did love him once. I'm carrying his child. I just, you know, last night I saw him. I, I, I didn't even, I don't even know him anymore. Look, Brooke, you have done everything you can for Tom. It's up to him now to either accept it or not. I know that, but it's just, it seems like such a big waste. Why don't you let me take your lunch and cheer you up? Come on, come on, what do you say? Look, really, I, I think it'd be terrific. I mean, I can feed two of you for the price of one. <laughs> All right. We accept. <laughs> That's my girls. <laughs> George, you have carte blanche. You can fire and hire anybody you want, all right? That's a big responsibility. Well, you've done it up till now, all right? So I'm sure you can continue to do it for a few more weeks. Well, how long is Tom going to be gone? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take him to get himself together. What about the bills and the payroll? You know, Friday, it's payday. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. <sighs> you know that time that Tom was out of town when his father took sick? He authorized you to sign all the checks. You could still do it, couldn't you? Well, I guess I'm going to have to do it. I'm really sorry. I, I know you don't need all this. No, I don't, but uh, we'll muddle through, George. I'm, I'm going to be in the office, all right? All right. Hey, George, what you say? Do I get the job or not? Well, it's all yours. And as a matter of fact, you can start right now. That's great! Thanks a million, George. I really appreciate it. I really do. All right. Have you heard from him? Not since you called. Do you have any idea where... No, I... Where have you been? I've been trying to get a hold of you. Time out. I'm leaving. Whatever it is, I don't want to hear it. Tom, listen. Adam Chandler was outside my office. He overheard us. He knows that you and Erica slept together the before they got married. Oh, great. And after you left, the look on his face and the tone in his voice, it was, it was frightening. What did you tell him? I told him that he'd misunderstood, but it wasn't any use because he knew I was lying. You denied it? Tom, he's insanely jealous. He has a dangerous temper. I'm worried about what he might try to do to you. W would you mind repeating what you just said? I said I still love you. You still love me? I know, I can't believe it myself. I mean, it just... I didn't think it was going to happen, but it's true. I love you. After we talked, I realized that I had to stop denying my feelings. I mean, I can't help it. The man I love is you. Have you any idea how long I... Mike, Mike, what are we going to do? You're here because you still care about me. What is the matter with you? Adam Chandler is a dangerous man. I'm not worried about Adam Chandler. If he wants to take me, hon, that's just fine with me. You think it's nothing, don't you? 
Not even Adam Chandler can threaten the great Tom Cudahy. Brooke, why don't you just admit it? The reason you're here is because you still care about me. You know, you're a real prize. I come over here to warn you about something that I think is a dangerous situation, and all you can do is flatter yourself and think that I still care about you. Well, you've made your point very clearly, Brooke, and I think I've made mine. Where are you going? I really would like to stay, but I've missed two appointments with Sydney, and if I miss a third, I'm going to have to find myself a new accountant. Tom! You're a fool! This is Brooke English. What do you want? Look, please don't hang up on me. I, I want to talk to you about what you talked to me about this morning. Look, I'm not in the mood for this. Look, right. please, I, I just... I, don't hang up on me. I, you're angry for, for, for a reason. There's no need to be angry. You took something out of context, and you don't know the whole story. I know enough. Now leave me alone. Uh, Mike, this is Brooke Cudahy. Listen, I'm sorry to bother you. Do you have any idea where Erica might be? Oh, uh, no. Isn't she at home? I've already tried there three times. Uh, it's just very important that I talk to her. Brooke, uh, why don't you try her at home in about oh, a few minutes? I think she'll be there. Okay, I guess it wouldn't hurt to try there again. Thank you, Mike. Oh, wait a minute, Brooke. Are you all right? Uh, I hope everything's all right. Goodbye. I know you don't want to see me, but I... I had to come. Is, is Erica here? No, I'm, I'm the only one that's here. I just want to talk to her for a couple of minutes. You can talk to me instead. I'm lonely. What? Here, come sit down. Please, sit down. Please. Oh, would you like a chocolate chip cookie? I have a new one. No, thank you. I'm here because I, uh, the threat that you made this morning, I took very seriously. What threat? The threat to Tom and Erica. Ah, oh, Tom and Erica. I know who Erica is, but who's Tom? What? Is he alive or dead? Are you for real? Let's play 20 questions. <laughs> is he alive or dead? <laughs> I don't believe this. He's alive, isn't he? Isn't he? Yes. He's alive. And he better stay that way. Are you mad at me? Am I mad at you? I hate it. I hate it when people get mad at me. I don't have time for this, Mr. Chandler. Wait, 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 please. I thought you wanted to play, to play a game with me. You know what? You are sick. If you do anything to carry that threat out, you're going to have to answer to me. Do you understand that? I hate that. I hate them. I hate them all. I hate them. I hate them! I hate them! I hate them! I hate them! Twenty questions is the game he was playing. I can believe that. I believe it easily. He wouldn't talk about anything for real. It's, it's not the first time he's acted strangely. Before. Yeah, well, it's the first time I've had to deal with it. I'm telling you, that man is sick. Yes, I, I understand that. Look, I want you to calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. Nobody is taking me seriously. I am taking you seriously, okay? Even you do not know what I am saying. Adam knows that Erica and Tom slept together. He is furious. He is talking about threats, about how they're going to pay for it. Okay, okay. So what is it that you want to do about it? 
Why, she's your sister. Don't you think somebody ought to warn her? I will. I'll take care of it, okay? What I want you to do right now is a little breathing. I want you to calm down. I'm fine. You are not fine. You are pregnant. Getting excited like this is not good for you. And Tom doesn't believe me either. I mean, he, he, he swaggers out of his office. He thinks it's of no great concern of his. Tom is a big boy. He can take care of himself. Yeah? Against a lunatic? Excuse me. Brooke, how are you? Uh, Brooke, uh, this is George. Uh, I know you're worried about Tom, so I thought I should call you. What's wrong? Well, I just got a call from Sidney Keyes, his accountant. Tom had an appointment a half an hour ago. Never showed up. Yes, Mark. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Tom isn't. He's in the emergency room. What? Now listen to me, don't react. He was on his way over to Landview to see his accountant. Somebody ran him off the road. He's still unconscious. Erica, I think Adam is behind this. Oh, no. He found out about you and Tom. Hang up the phone, Erica. Get off, Mark. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. All right, now, easy does it. Easy does it. Did you put up my head up there a little bit? Yes, of course. Of course, there you go. Thank you. Okay, I'll be right back. All right. How do things go down in uh, X-ray? I'm waiting for Chuck to come back with the results. How do you feel? A little sore. Well, I warned you. Nobody blames you, bro. My conscience is clear, Tom. I told you Adam Chandler was unpredictable. I told you he was out to get you. Well, he almost did. You should have been more careful. You know that. How did it happen? I was driving down the highway, minding my own business, when some jerk forced me off the road. That was it. You're very lucky if it had been a couple of yards further down the road, you would have gone off in deep water. Are you glad I'm okay? I'm glad you're not dead, if that's what you mean. You're all hard. Look, I did what I could. I went over to Adam Chandler's to try and calm him down. What'd you tell him? Well, I wanted to try and convince him that what happened between you and... Erica didn't mean anything, and that he, uh... He shouldn't be as upset as he was. You're really going to tell him that? Well, that's what I said, didn't I? And you finally realized the truth. Well, maybe there's a chance that we can get back together. Brooke, you're right. It didn't mean a thing. Please, can't we maybe start over? Tom, no. But you just said. I know what I said. I don't want to feel responsible for something happening to you because of Adam Chandler. But you meant what you said. Look what happened between you and Erica. It's not a capital crime. I mean, you shouldn't have to pay for it with your life, but as far as I'm concerned, it was, it was unforgivable. No, I don't buy that. You went to Adam Chandler because you still care. I would have done it for anybody. But you did it for me. Tom, we're not getting back together. What do you raise my hopes for? Just to kick me in the teeth? Oh, hi, Brad. Hello, Tom. Well, got some good news for you. Smiley, don't you want to hear about the news? What is it, Chuck? Well, the x-rays came back. And there's nothing broken. No serious damage, as far as we can tell. Except for abrasions and, of course, you have a minor concussion. And what am I doing here? Well, you should stay the night. No. If you're Tom, you should be kept under observation. I'm sorry, Doc. I'm going home. Now, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Now, come on, now. Be sensible. Now, just stay here for a Please while. Please don't try to keep me here. Tom, I'm telling you, you shouldn't be alone until we're sure that there is no damage I'll done. drive you home. Don't put yourself out. You're, you don't have a car anymore, remember? I'll call a friend to give me a lift. A real friend. Hi, Mr. Thanks for meeting me. Well, I'm glad I had the time. Me too. Look, I'm going to get right into this. Um, you know, I, I took Tom home from the hospital. 
Yeah. I offered to take him home, but he didn't want me to, so I'm glad he had a friend to call. Yeah, well, I think of you as my friend, too. Well, that goes both ways. Good. Because, look, if we're going to stay friends, we've got to talk. That sounds serious. It is. Listen, I've seen Tom pretty depressed at times, but he's bottomed out this time. Donna. He's created his own problems. No, I'm not so sure that it's all that one-sided. Good afternoon, ladies. Uh, what can I get for you today? Uh, can I have a Diet Cola, please? Mm-hmm. Just a club soda, thing. Okay. You. Sure. Are you blaming me? No. I, well, maybe, yeah, partly. Did he do a number on me? Oh, Brooke. You know Tom would never do that. Anyway, you know, he didn't have to, because I see things from your side, or I did until just recently. The stuff with Gil and now this business with Erica. He told you about Erica? Yes, and Brooke, I know how you must have felt. But don't you think you're carrying things a little too far? How? By leaving an unfaithful alcoholic husband? The way I see it, you're doing more. You're... It looks to me like you're using your unborn child to get revenge. I don't want revenge. I just want to get away from him. Yeah, but you're taking his child, too, and he is hurting. He's really in pain. Well, maybe he deserves to be. No, not this much. Here you go. Uh, club soda and a diet. Soda. Thanks. <laughs> Brooke, you don't realize how much this baby means to Tom. You've got to think about what you're doing. Donna, uh, I have thought about it. Believe me. Think some more. Because... You might be driving Tom to do something drastic, and you're going to hate yourself if I that happens. I can't continue to take responsibility for what he does. You might have to. You might have to if worse comes to worst. What do you think I should do? All right, I'll tell you. I think you've got to stop threatening to take Tom's child away from him. If you can possibly see your way clear, make some kind of compromise. You've got to give the guy something to live for. Sorry to come down so hard on you, but we are friends, and I hope it'll give you something to think about. I gotta run. Uh, I'll get the check on my way out. Thanks again for meeting me. Okay. Maybe I do owe him something. Laura Ann Cudahy. Now that is charming. Laura Elizabeth Cudahy sounds like bumping down the stairs. <laughs> well, I think she'll probably just use a middle initial, so I don't think we really have to bother with it, do we? We don't have to be concerned. Though. Well, you know what we'll do? We'll just wait until the christening day, and then we'll see, won't we, baby girl? Whatever she's called, she's one dynamite kid, I'll Isn't tell you that. She? Oh, Oh, Brooke, I just can't wait until you bring her back. When will you be coming home to Pine Valley? Uh, I don't know what, Phoebe. I'm thinking of not coming back at all. Oh, she has to go. Yes, oh, I'm, I'm afraid sorry. So. Oh, sweetheart. Bye -bye. Mm, remember your Aunt Phoebe loves you. Yes, she does. I'll be back to see you real soon. Okay. You come home. Bye-bye. Say bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Brooke, I couldn't believe my ears. You can't possibly mean that you're not bringing that beautiful child back to Pine Valley. That's your home. Aunt Phoebe, it was Lincoln's home, too, at one time, but he's very happy in King's Cross now. That's entirely different, dear. He had to move here because he went into partnership with someone here. Look, I think that uh, this would be a lovely place to raise Laura. I really do. <laughs> th th that is beside the point, darling. Now, I'm sure that, that King's Cross being a lovely place has nothing whatsoever to do with your decision. It's just that you're running away from Tom. FPB, just a minute, all right? I know that I'm right, and you know it too, dear. You know what people will say? That you simply ran off and stuck your head in the sand. I don't care what people say. I have a right to want to start my own life with me and my baby. Of course you do, darling. But you can do that without running away. I'm not running away. I am merely saying I'm thinking of staying here where I am. Look, uh, this 
isn't your home, Pine Valley is. You're simply letting your feelings for Tom drive you away. I don't have any fears about Tom anymore. Look, I mean, if I had those, why would I stay here? He knows I'm here. The more I think about this, the better I like it. I think this is the perfect place for you to settle. But I don't, and I don't understand your attitude, Mom. Well, look at it from her point of view. If she moves to King's Cross, she'll still be close enough to Pine Valley so that she can visit you and the family. And at the same time, she'll be far enough away so that Tom won't become a, well, a daily you problem, see, you, okay? You see, you see, you said it yourself. The whole thing goes back to Tom. Well, she's not going to have to worry about him anymore. Brooke is in a position right now to set down new rules. Right, and that is exactly what I intend to do. Good, dear, but don't do it by running away. I am not going to have to worry about him anymore. Brooke is in a position right now to set down new rules. Right, and that is exactly what I intend to do. Good, dear, but don't do it by running away. I am not. Look, I just want to start a new life. I want to put all the problems in the past. Oh, darling, they'll still be on the same train with you. You'll never get rid of your problems by running away from them. Aunt Phoebe, just let up on it, all right? Really? All right. All right, sweetheart. I will. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. But it's upsetting to me. D just promise me. Promise me, dear, that you will think through very carefully everything I've said to you before you make a final decision. I am really excited about this decision you've made. Well, I'm surprised. Uh, I didn't expect you to back me up so strongly, but it helped with her. Well, I was here. <laughs> well. Now, come on, you didn't really think your aunt was going to steamroll you, did you? She is quite capable of doing that. No. No, but I, you know, I understand how she feels. I know she's, you know, she's disappointed that the baby and I aren't coming back. Well, just don't let her get to you. Right now, what you have to think about is what's best for you and Laura. No, I know, I know. I mean, you know, part of me, I... Uh, part of me would like to, to raise her in Pine Valley. Yeah. But I think this idea about new beginnings, oh, it's really important. Well, you think King's Cross is a nice town, don't I you? I do. In fact, I think I'll move here myself. You're not serious. Yes, I am. There's nothing to hold me in Pine Valley anymore. What? Well, you have a job and, and friends and your family's there. My family, Erica. I'll see her whether she lives in New York or I live in, in King's Cross. Well, that's not really the point here. What is, my job? I can get as good a job right here as I can at the Chateau. Mark, I mean, there's plenty of bars. Look, you're just moving a little too fast for me. No, I'm not. What do you mean? <laughs> look, I appreciate everything that you've done for me. And we are very close. I realize that, but you, I... I'm not ready, all right? I'm not talking about marrying you. Uh, I, I mean, or anything like that. At least, in fact, I don't think that's a very good idea right now. Well, why would you pull up stakes and move to King's Cross, then? Because I want to be near you. <laughs> I can't help it. I don't like being where you're not. discuss this later, all right? I'm sorry, the nurse said that she was bringing the baby by in a few minutes. I'll wait outside. No, Tom, no, come in. I'll, uh, I'll be going, and then, uh, I'll call you later, okay? Okay. There's a gown for you, over there. Thank you. I brought this little present for Laura. It's uh, one of those mobiles you hang over the crib when you get home. They're great. That's very nice. Thank you. Brooke, I apologize for the sarcasm this morning. I realized I was way out of line. I just wanted you to know that I had tried to call you. I know. I, I don't know why I overreacted. I knew the divorce or papers were coming. It was just a surprise. This is adorable. 
It'll probably be a little while before she can really appreciate it, but it's really nice. Well, I didn't really know what present to buy. I guess from now on I'll be paying more attention to the toy stores around town. <laughs> oh, no, you, you don't have to feel like you have to buy her a present every time you come to visit. Yeah, I guess maybe it's silly to buy presents at this stage. I... Just a little overwhelmed by it all. No, I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> I hope you and I can be friends for her sake. I'm sure that as long as you abide by my visiting regulations and you don't hassle me about anything, that there will be no problem. That's good. The only problem I got right now is the long drive back and forth. And as soon as you two move back to Pine Valley, I'll be able to spend a little more time with Laura instead on the highway. <laughs> looking forward, looking forward. Here she is. She is. Hi, baby. Let's put the back of my head. Okay, I can. Okay. Say hi to your mommy. Yes, thank you very much. Well, that's uh, three apartments so far that I've lined up. Well, they aren't easy to find in a small town. You know, it's usually houses. Yeah, I know a couple of the agents were trying to convince me to look at some houses, but I think that would be too much for me to handle right now. Maybe this whole thing is a little bit too much for you to handle. How do you mean? I don't know. I get the feeling you're rushing into things. Maybe you should just think this through a little bit. Do you and Link think I'm going to be a nuisance? Oh, honey, of course not. We love you. I would like nothing better than to have you here with us all the time. It's just like... Listen, listen, I'm going to get out. I'm going to meet people. I'm going to make friends and... I know. I, I'm just saying I don't think you should burn all your bridges, you know. I think you've got a better base to work from right from Pine Valley. There are too many entanglements there, and I just want to free myself. I'll get it. Hi, Mom. How are you? Hi. Hi. I didn't know you were coming. Oh, well, I'm here. Things are moving so fast, I figured I'd better... This is nice. I figured I'd better fill you in, let you know what's going on. Well, why? What's happening? Well, I've got an interview this morning with this guy who runs the rumpus room uh, here at the Stilton Hotel, you know, in the one in King's Cross. And then a little later on, I'm meeting with the guy who, uh, who operates the Starlight. What is this all about? Well, they're looking for piano players. So I figure whichever one gives me the best offer, that's the guy I'll go with. Mark, you've got the best offer at the Chateau. Oh, no, no, never mind that. As soon as I, uh, as soon as I land one of these, I'm going to give him my notice. Wait a minute, don't you think you're jumping the gun? No. As soon as I get a job here, the faster I'll be able to move. Do I hear sounds of approval? <laughs> Thanks for the refreshments, I gotta get going. Mark, relax, all right? I feel like this is a pit stop the way you're tearing around. <clears throat> a little charged up. I know. I just don't want you to make any hasty decisions. I just don't want you to take any job, especially if it doesn't pay as well as the job you have now. Don't worry, I won't get rough. I'll get a decent salary. You deserve more than a decent salary. You're a fine composer. Sounds like I got a new agent, huh? All right, I will keep what you've said in mind. I have it there, and I really do have to go. So hopefully I'll be back in a little while with, uh, with good news. All right. You want me out? Huh? Yes. Thanks for everything, Kelly. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take a leg. Yes, yes. Well, you are definitely not as gung-ho about this as he is. What? His rush to move here, his rush to move here is bothering you. I just don't want him to make a mistake about his career. Or about you. It seems to me that's what's worrying you. Ke Kelly, I've made it very clear. He knows that he's not going to move in with me. Mm -hmm. Seems to be a little possessive about you and Laura. No. That, that, look, it's not that. He, he has a certain emotional investment in me and in the baby. Well, you can call it whatever you want to call it. I just think you should tell him how you feel and ask him to back off a little bit. I don't really know how I feel. You know, in a lot of ways, it's very nice to have Mark around because he's warm and he's supportive and he's understanding. Look, I don't think that you're the kind of lady who's going to take something and not give back. Well, no, I care about him. I do. Honey, Mark thinks he's got a chance with you. Oh, my God. 
Maybe he does. I mean, it would be a, certainly a nice change to have a man who, who gives instead of takes all the time. This is the busiest house in King's Grove. Get it. You. I don't know what you're trying to pull, but there is no way in hell you're going to keep my baby away from me. Hey, if she cries, she probably wants her bottle. Uh, you don't have to rush the baby out of here. I'm not about to harm anybody. Uh, well, I don't know what you're going to do, and I'm not going to take any chances. You come raging in here like a bull. Well, you stab me in the back. I'm yelling because you keep twisting the knife. I don't know what you're talking about. Could I... you kindly just lower your voice? I'm talking about your need to punish me. What is it? It never stops. You know, you are absolutely paranoid. I haven't hurt you. Well, you're doing a pretty good job without doing anything with your decisions to stay here in King's Cross. Yes. That has nothing to do with you. You've got to be kidding. You're making it impossible for me. i, I got to drive hours just to get a glimpse of my daughter. Look, my decision to stay here is, has absolutely nothing to do with you. What else? I don't want to move back to Pine Valley. I don't want to go back to those bad memories. I just want to make a new life for myself. Well, if that's all this is about, why didn't you tell me about it? Oh, why do I have to find out from somebody else? Do I know about your personal life? When Donna and you moved in together, did I hear about it from you? There's a big difference. My decision didn't involve Laura. What? That can't be helped. You have no right to be underhanded or to lie to me when it comes no, to my daughter. I did not lie to you. What? What did you call the way you led me on? I, I did not lead you on oh, either. On. You don't remember how I was going on about how happy I was going to be spending time in Pine Valley with Laura? How come you didn't tell me about what you're doing? I didn't say anything to you because I hadn't made up my mind yet. Well, then you should have discussed it with me, Brooke. I'm the one most affected by the decision, for crying out loud. I'll tell you what this has. It has Mark Dalton written all over. I'll, I'll bet you he's moving here, too. I don't have to listen to you talk about Mark Dalton. Yeah, and I don't believe for one minute that this decision was all yours. Oh. I don't care what you believe. Yeah, new life, my eye. This is nothing but Mark Dalton just moving in. Just stop it. He would just love to take over. But I'll tell you something. He's not taking over the life of my little girl. Well, and you are not going to ace me out of her life I'll tell either. you something. You're not going to give me orders because I am going to move wherever I please. Over my dead body. You want trouble? You're going to get it. Rapping. I did it myself. Oh, did you? <laughs> Let me see. I hear something. What is that? Oh. Oh, Mark, this is lovely. These things come in sizes. I didn't know that. Oh, a silver rattle. Oh, it's such an elegant gift. Well, she's an elegant kid. Oh, look what you did. Oh, you had it engraved with <laughs> love from Uncle Mark. Oh, she's gonna love this. Oh, thank you. Oh. You're, you're too extravagant, you no, know I'm that. Not. Oh. I've got some great news, though. Do you remember that, uh, that interview I had the other day? Well, it went well. I mean, very well. In fact, I'm expecting a pretty firm offer from the Riviera Club right here in King's Cross. A very posh place. Mark, I know the Riviera Club. It doesn't hold a candle to the Chateau. Well, I got a great deal. They're being very generous. <sighs> you know, the move is going to cost you a fortune. Brooke, it's for a good cause. You and Laura are a lot more important to me than moving expenses. I just feel like I'm uprooting you. I'm, I'm costing you money. Do you want me around? Yes, I want you okay, around, but okay. I... Okay, I, I... Then it's settled. End of discussion. What am I going to do with you? I have several suggestions. <laughs> But it won't be a problem, I promise. I want to know about Tom. I want to know if you've seen him since his last explosion. No, I haven't seen him and I haven't heard from him and that's fine with me. Does that mean you don't want to see him anymore? I don't want to deal with his tantrums anymore. Wait, wait. wait. Uh, I think she's awake, so I'm going to go up and check on her. I'm going to take the rattle, see if it has her seal of approval. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> oh, I might have known. Don't 
you try and sweet talk me. I'm here to see Brooke. Look, if you had any smarts at all, you'd get in your car and you'd go back home. To hell with you. Tom, Brooke doesn't want to see you. Oh, I hate leaving. Well, it's a long trip back, so... Mm, soon I'll just be five minutes across town, that's that. I think you should still think about it. I know what I want, and that's I want to be near you. Well, listen, I appreciate your, uh, your coming out. Nothing could have kept me away. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. to humiliate me in front of a man who has made me the best job offer in my life. All right, you've made your point. I'm sorry. It was bad timing. Hello? Yes, he's right here. It's for you. It's a Mrs. Woodring. Great. Hi, Fran. How are you? Well, that's great. Yeah, that's terrific. I'll be right over then. Okay, thanks. Bye. It's my real estate agent. She's found me an apartment. You know the one you like on Bayberry Street? This one's right next door. I don't believe it. What's the matter? Well, with you trying to ride herd on me here and Tom trying to control my life from Pine Valley, I think Laura and I ought to move to Chicago. What? I'm fed up. I've had it. Look, I think we ought to talk this thing over. I don't want to talk about it right now. We're going to have to talk about it sometime. Well, we're not talking about it now. Well, when? When I'm ready. We're expecting someone? Brooke, what's wrong? How come you had me? What's he doing here? I called him. Uh... I appreciate you making the trip, Tom. Would you mind sitting down? Is Laurel okay? Yeah, she's fine. Would the both of you please sit down? Thank you. What'd you call him for? Because I think it's time that we have a talk. I know that you talked to Mr. Lewis. Mark told me. And it makes me sick. Now, wait a minute. No, no, you wait a minute. You don't have any right to interfere in my life. I resent it, and I am not going to tolerate it. Is that clear? Who told you? It doesn't matter who told me. What matters is the way you are both behaving. You act like you are two little boys, like you're fighting over a football. Wait a minute. And you wait a minute. You're just as bad as he is. What do you think? I'm some little dimwit? I need some man to protect me? You're just a second. I'm not finished, all right? I don't want any more of arranging of my life. Do you understand that? I don't want you running in here and, and telling tales on the other one. First of all, it's pathetic, it's childish. And secondly, I am more than capable of making decisions for myself. And if I want to work here in King's Cross, or if I want to work in Pine Valley, or if I want to work in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, that is my choice to make. Because it's my life, it's my career, and I don't want any more interference. I hope that's understood. Yeah. Good. And now I wish that you would both leave. Can I at least look at Laura before I it's go? It's really not a good time, all right? Look, I, I think that maybe... I want you both to leave, all right? And I don't want you to come back unless you're invited. A cold night. It warms the body and the soul. Mm -hmm. Like my soul could use a little comfort. You know, throughout history, a man has always been fascinated by fire. If I tell you something, will you promise not to laugh? I promise. When I was a little girl, I used to love to sit by the fire and stare at the flames. I saw people that, that I had known that died. I really did. I mean, like my grandmother. It was very strange, but I... I mean, there's no explanation for it, but I, I really saw them. Dora! 
Well, that's not that all far-fetched, you know. There are cultures where fire has represented uh, the eternal spirit of life. <laughs> I think you're very sweet to try and find a rational explanation for that. Tell me, how does it feel being back in old Pine Valley? Truthfully? Hmm. It's a little strange. Oh, well, that's to be expected. I mean, you've had so much upheaval in your life, but I'm sure you'll be feeling at home very soon. I hope so. Oh, I can't tell you how delighted we are to have you and little Laura with us. That aunt of yours has hardly left her side since you arrived. Oh, I know. She and Mrs. Valentine are upstairs. They're staring at her, and she's sleeping. <laughs> well, you must bear with them. They're thrilled to death to have a baby in the house again. No, oh, I know they are. They were arguing before about how wide the window should be left open. <laughs> I think I'm going to get more help than I want. Well, you've got to bear with them. It's only, it's only for a time, you know, until the carriage house is freshened up a bit. Well, that's something else. You know, Aunt Baby really shouldn't have gone to all that trouble. Oh, my dear, she loves it. I'm sorry, I'd like to stay and chat. But I've really got work to do. I've got some, I've got some reading before that archaeology class of mine. Oh, I have some work to do, too, so you go ahead. All right. See you later. Mm-hmm. Mark, how did you know I was here? I called Kelly's looking for you. She told me. Oh. Oh? Is that all you have to say? Why didn't you tell me that you decided to move back to Pine Valley? Don't blame you for being mad at me. Mad? Me? Just because I quit my job at the Chateau, put a deposit on an apartment over in King's Cross so I can be near you because you plan to move there? Why should I be mad? Mark, I was going to tell you. Really? When? After I'd moved? <sighs> Look, it, you have to be honest. I didn't ask you to leave your job. I didn't ask you to move to King's Cross. You sure as hell didn't dissuade me. Well, I tried. You're right. I'm sorry. I really should have told you. I should have told you when I, when I made the decision. Why didn't you? Because I just didn't want to go into it right then. Oh, this is great. Mark, look, I was confused. A lot of things have happened to me. And between you and Tom and, and Aunt Phoebe trying to tell me what I should do with my life, I finally had to decide what was going to be best for me and Laura. All right, so obviously you think coming back to Pine Valley is best, okay? Yes, I do. And we're going to be moving into the carriage house in a couple of days. Where does that leave me? Mark, look, I can't take responsibility for you because my first, my first priorities have to be with my daughter. Well, let me tell you, in King's Cross, that's where it leaves me. Is that what you want? Brooke, I want to be near you. The whole subject of King's Cross would never have come up if you hadn't said you wanted to stay there. Well, maybe you could call Ellen and see if you could get your old job back. Oh, damn it, Brooke. You are the most important thing in my life. You are more important to me than any job. All right, I want to know something, and I want to know it now. Do we stand any sort of a chance? Well, what's the verdict? You want me to give up and ride off into the sunset, or...? Oh, Mark, please, don't be so melodramatic. Okay, how about a straight answer? You know how I feel about you. I love you. As a friend, I'm sorry if that's not what you want to hear. Why do you think it'll happen in time? Oh, I don't know. I mean, how can how can I know that? Look, you're a, you're a wonderful man and you're a wonderful friend, and I don't know what I would have done without your support all these months. But I am just not ready for anything more. Not yet. Tom? I mean, are you still in love with him? Look, Tom and I are divorced. But he is Laura's father, and I, I am going to have to see him. 
Look, I have a new work assignment. I'm, I'm a mother for the first time. I have a lot of things on my mind right now. And I'm just making things worse. No, I didn't say that. But, but if you continue to pressure me... I, I, I won't. I won't. You want to just see how it goes? Fine. You want to kiss on that? You're still working? Uh, I was just making a list of some things I have to do. Uh, I don't think my memory's quite what it used to be. No, come now, you're not that old. You just wait. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. No, I think being a single mother is going to take a lot of organization. Well, your Aunt Phoebe and I will do all we can to help, and then Mrs. Valentine and Hillary will lend a hand to <laughs> Don't think I don't appreciate that either. May I? Oh, sure. Be my guest. Ah, I'll be happy to pick up the cradle from Tom if you like. That would be great. Uh, let me check with him first, though. Does he know you're back? No. Uh, I have to call him soon because we're going to have to, you know, arrange for visitation rights and everything. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that you're going to let him see his little girl. If you could have seen the, the depth of emotion in his face when I told him that he had a daughter. Well, Tom's always wanted children, and I'm sure Laura will be a very big part of his life. Mm -hmm. He'll be a big part of her life, let me tell you. You know, Brooke, a daughter needs a father just as much as a son does. I didn't realize that until Hillary came back into my life. You have a very nice relationship with her, don't you? You're looking at a very fortunate man. I've had a second chance with both my wife and my daughter. I'm so glad you and Aunt Phoebe are back together. I really am. And I hope you will be as fortunate. Well, Langley, Tom and I are divorced, and I think what I have to do is concentrate on making a new life for Laura and myself, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. You'll do a beautiful job of it. I have every confidence in you. I guess I should have given you this before you took Laura upstairs, but uh, will you make sure she sees it? Oh, Benny, what have you done here? Well, you know, I wanted to get a christening cup, you know, like the one you got Emily in, but I figured the Duchess probably had an heirloom. Oh, yes, there's one in the English family. It's been there for generations. Oh, a silver spoon. Oh, this is lovely. Oh, Benny. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Oh, you, oh, you're such a sweetie. <laughs> oh, thank you, and Laura thanks oh, you. Oh, welcome. well, I thank you, too, for delivering it in person instead of mailing it. I don't have to tell you how much I miss you. I hope you're not driving back tonight. No, I'm going to stick around for a couple of days. Uh, oh. As a matter of fact, um, I may be moving back. Benny! Are you serious? Oh, that's wonderful. Well, well it's nothing definite yet. Well, we'll just see about that. <laughs> we'll hold you hostage. <laughs> Benjamin, do you mean to say that the government can tear down your grocery store? Oh, thanks. Everybody. And you have nothing at all to say about it? Thank you. It's not just my grocery store. It's the whole block. It happens a lot, Aunt Phoebe, when the state wants to put a highway through your property. I think that's terrible. Did you ask your congressman about it? <laughs> relax, relax. Uh, they're going to pay me a good price. I'll have enough money to start again. Oh, you mean you'll buy another grocery store? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, it was one thing to take over my grandma's grocery store, but it's not a business I would choose to go into on my own. I don't know if I'd recommend starting another one here, not with all the su supermarkets that are here. Well, I know it's the same in most locations that I've looked into, really. What? other locations. Well, I was thinking of going down south and seeing what the possibilities were there. Benjamin, don't you be lured into the glamour of the Sun Belt. You know perfectly well your heart will always be here. <laughs> now, I can't argue that. So I will be staying in town for a few days to check out the old Pine Valley possibilities. Oh, that's wonderful. You haven't checked into a motel yet, have you? No, no, I came straight here, but i probably go over to the Pinecone Motel. No, you won't. Because you are staying right here with us. But I thought you said that you were redecorating the carriage house for Brooke. Benjamin, there will always be room for you under this roof. I'm going upstairs right now and check the East Room to see that everything is in order. No, 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 wait, now, come on. I, I don't want you to go through any trouble. Uh, besides, 
besides, I want to look in on little Laura and see that she hasn't kicked the covers off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Aunt Phoebe. You're welcome, sweetheart. My daughter is not going to lack for a doting grandmother as long as that woman is around. <laughs> now, what about a daddy? Eh, what about a daddy? Well, last time I talked to you, you weren't going to give Tom any custody rights. Well, I've changed my mind. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, I know things got rough between you, but I didn't think that was such a great idea. Actually, Tom and I have become very civil toward each other, and uh, I've given him very generous uh, visitation rights. Great. What softened you up? I just didn't want a messy custody battle, and, and you know, Tom is shaped up. Mm -hmm. You sure a little love didn't sneak into that decision? I mean, freer visitation means you'll be seeing more Tom, or... No, no. Oh, I know, I know. You've always wanted Tom and me to get back together. Well, I managed to help it happen once. Well, it's not going to happen again, Benny, because things are over between us. I, well, I guess you haven't heard the news. What news? Donna moved in with Tom, so they're living together. Oh, really? I guess that is news, huh?
Yeah. Hey, you. You shoot up? Yeah. You get your fix? Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. Enjoy your trip. I'm alive. Oh, oh dear God. That will do, Warren. Thank you. I'll go check upstairs. Do that, will you? Well, your wrists feeling a little better? Yeah, they're just great. Well, they still look a little raw. Maybe later on we can give you a chance to soak them in some warm water. Is that a bruise or just dirt on your face? That's a phony concern. There's nothing phony about my interest in the state of your health. Come on, I know I was brought here to be killed, so why don't you just do it and get it over with? If you would just play ball with us, Brooke, there'd be no need to kill you. You gotta be kidding. No, not at all. All you have to do is name your source, and I'm sure we could find a place in the organization for a smart girl like you. Gee, that sounds familiar. Isn't that the plan that you tried to get Fran and MJ to sell me? Well, it's a pity they weren't bright enough to recruit someone of your caliber. Either are you. Don't underestimate me, Brooke. Don't underestimate me. You've done every rotten thing that you could do to me. And don't blame everything on me. Andrew. Aren't you the boss? The hammer? Isn't what that... Isn't that what the organization calls you? Who told you that... Oh, yes, of course. Your source. And there is nothing that you can do that will ever make me reveal that source. I wouldn't be too sure about that. What's left? Besides killing me, you sent me to the roughest prison in the state. You had me put in solitary. We still have a few cards left. What do you mean, that goon Warren? I know what he's capable of. I had a preview of that last night. I still won't talk. No, I was thinking of something else that I think will help open your mouth. Let's go up to the tower room, shall we? Major confession, huh? Yeah. Oh, you stupid jerk. There's nothing on this. Not one word.
Okay, you win. I'll tell you anything you want to know. 